Hi there everyone, welcome back. Today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Com Pack. It's the large version uh, by First Bit. So to start off, we'll go from the top on the outside, work our way down and around and then go to the inside. Quite a lot of features on this bag, um, pretty common uh, with the First Bit products. Main construction material, as per usual, 500D Cordura, plenty of resilience, not so much weight, uh, you know, a lot better than 1000D. Grab handle, this this thing's really interesting, I've not seen this before, this, it's actually um, it's basically a, a bean bag, if, if you can imagine, or lots of little small beads inside this handle there, which really spreads the weight out into your hand when, you, uh, when you're carrying the bag in that sort of fashion, rather than just having a simple webbing strap that digs into your hand, so that's good. Hyperlon panel on the top here, and then you've got your sort of uh, mil spec elastic stuff you'll see on your, your cry combat cut and uh, uh, pants uh, on, on the knee pad area. And that's your egress port for like hydration tubes, uh, communication wires, all that sort of thing. The main compartment zip, uh, all the zips are you know, really heavy duty, they've all got paracord poles on them uh, with plastic tabs, nice and easy to grab. The zip itself. Uh, nice and smooth, quick and easy, opens up nice and wide so you can really uh, get into everything that's in the bag very fast. And all of them are colour matched to the portion of the fabric that they're on, so we've got green uh, metal actual teeth, uh, the closure system there, and the cord and the plastic on the green bits, and then you know, attention to detail wise, you've got the tan colours on the, the tan bits of the cordura. On the outside we've got a sort of external storage area, uh, in here you could fit something like a helmet or you could stuff like a soft shell jacket or a rain jacket, uh, something along those lines for like something you need to get out really quickly and you can store it away um, really easy and of course get at it again with these buckles. On the very front surface, nice quick and easy slash cut style, just a simple storage pocket there. And then another one on the actual side of this front section to get more stuff. Um, I kind of would have preferred it if the zip opened the other way from the top going down because that way, if you opened it there, for, if you open it halfway, for example, and you've got stuff sat on the bottom, then you can get in uh, into the bag from the top of that opening, and then stuff won't fall, be falling out. Whereas if you open it out there, there's more of a chance, especially with a taller item, it could uh, fall out the side. That, but um, you know, pretty. It should, you know, just always lie it down sideways. It's far from a, far from a deal breaker. Inside the actual external stash pocket, we've got another zip pocket slash opening just here. Yet again, more space, loads and loads of divided sections, so you can pretty you know, separate your things out and know where everything is. On the sides, both sides, nice heavy duty. Uh, actual mesh, obviously uh, elasticated top. It, you know, um, this this actual mesh material for considering it is a mesh, and you think it might be weak compared to stuff that some CV bag manufacturers use. This thing, this sort of stuff, will last a very long time. You see this same fabric on a lot of other tactical gear. Um, one on each side. Obviously, these are ideal for your water bottles. You can fit, uh, you know, a good good liter or so. I would imagine uh, in both sides and it'll be held in securely with that elastic. On the back, the shoulder straps themselves, plenty of adjustment at the top here and at the bottom uh, with webbing. Two inch at the top and then an inch down here. And you can actually unclip the buckles and you could, in theory, um, actually take one strap, move it across and, and make it more of like a messenger bag type thing by clipping it out onto the other side. Shoulder pads are really good, lots of space for mesh and padding on here. That's going to be very comfortable, really help with getting away sweat. And then you've got Hyperlon pads on there that actually would work quite well. Um, when you've got a, a rifle stock in your shoulder while wearing the bag, that'll make a good friction point, help keep that stock tucked in and secure. Actual portion that touches your back, nice first bit logo sewn in there. Plenty of space and mesh padding again. This space mesh stuff, you know, a lot of you will be familiar with it. It's really excellent. You're going to sweat with something like this against your skin. It's going to get, you know, it's going to get humid and moist. But it, you know, this stuff makes a big difference. Now you'll notice the contour of the bag straight away, I'm sure. And then to actually access the internal frame, there's a zip there. 
the frame itself, this is a very high strength plastic. And it's actually got an aluminium keeper, a former, on there, which is actually sewn on. And if you remove the frame, like so now, as you can see, it's got quite a contour to it. I think it's perhaps a little bit much. I mean, it's going to depend where you position the bag on your back. Um, but it, you know, it's it's got plenty of rigidity with the uh, with the aluminium piece. But you can simply remove that, just slide it right out, and if you want it back in, it only takes a couple of seconds. Let's just push that back in there. Um, even with the aluminium in, you know, if you were to, to fall on it, for example, it's not going to break your back because it's still got a bit of flex in it. You have that modularity. If, if you don't like the shape of it, it doesn't fit you. Um, you know, you can you can go down to just the plastic without the aluminium spine, or you can take the entire unit out completely. You know, entirely uh, you know, up to user preference and the spirit of giving you that option. I'll stuff that back away again. Base is entirely hypolon. Um, this is good in that the stuff is uh, well, it's waterproof, as far as I know. So obviously, when you put your bag down on wet ground, which is going to happen quite a lot, then the water isn't going to soak through into there and get all your stuff. I think some people in the industry think it's sort of a miracle material, like it's invincible. Um, you know, but from it, I mean, you can, I don't know if the camera will pick that up. You can just see a spot. This has only been taken uh, for you know one short, very very short, like we literally went a couple of miles with it just to get a bit of footage. Uh, and it's started to wear um, through, but it is double laden with Cordura, so you know, um, some wear points it will wear thin quite quickly. Uh, you know, but, like I say, it, it's not like the whole bottom of the bag is going to fall out by any stretch, it's, it's perfectly secure because it's got that extra layer of fabric there. Opening up the main compartment of the bag again, just to go inside, there's uh, lots going on in here. Um, in the same area that your plastic former frame fits, you can uh, fit a hydration bladder quite easily. And you've got a nice uh, sort of like a Velcro one wrap thing there that will just hang up your, your source uh, or your camelback. One of the main ideas behind this bag is for carrying something like a small to medium frame laptop or a tablet. And for that purpose, you've got this pocket just inside here, and that's got plenty of padding on the actual section in front of it. Yeah, another stash pocket on the inside just there. Your main section, which has got plenty of room. Obviously, you pick, I would primarily pick whether you go for the standard size or the large com comms pack uh, based on what you're going to want to fit uh, into there, and obviously the whole overall main compartment itself. On the front side, of that main compartment, we've got two mesh stash pockets. Might be a bit uh, difficult to see the lower one, but they've got they've got the zip closure on them. Just really good for all those small items that you don't want in the bottom of the main compartment because then you have to dig for them, so you can put them in these little stash arrays, and uh, you know that makes life a lot easier. Obviously, quality throughout. I think anyone who's uh, been following the channel, you'll probably be familiar. Um, you can check out some of my other videos on uh, First Beer's gear, find a bit of information about the, the stitching, all the material selection stuff like the polymer hardware, uh, all that kind of thing, the actual threads they use, etc. etc. You know, everything is as good as you can get. You can't get better. Um, and the standard size bag is priced around $150, which is very, very competitive in the sort of tactical gear market in terms of uh, backpacks. Very, very competitive, um, certainly in this quality range. Color-wise, this is actually the most military tactical looking colorway that they do. There's four available. This is the Ranger Green and Tan. There's also a uh, completely plain black. You can get a sort of combination um, that's mostly sort of a, a medium blue with some gray and black panels. That's very, you know, low visibility looking, nice and, inconspicuous or there's one that's like a, a silver mesh a mesh look to it a crisscross grid pattern again you know they, they very much look like civilian bags good range of colors available this is the most military one um, very good price tons of features tons of pockets as a nice sort of intermediate sized day-to-day -day pack I think uh, really excellent guys so yeah um, do check it out I'll put a link down in the description box below. Uh, thank you to all our subscribers and all the 
guys hit thumbs up and shares and stuff, much appreciated. Check out the Facebook page for the channel below, uh, do daily updates on there. So yeah, thank you very much for watching everyone, see you next time.